Now we'll work on the review for the sampling distribution quiz. So on partner A, we'll start with that one. According to the patient health questionnaire, 26.1%, um, or basically that's your proportion. In fact, let me go ahead and add that in. The proportion, always use a decimal, 0 0.261, all right? Of respondents shows uh, symptoms of anxiety disorder. You want to take a sample of your 600 classmates to estimate the proportion who are also experiencing symptoms of anxiety disorder. N is your population size, N is 600. What is the smallest sample size you can uh, take and still meet the large counts condition? So you have two options on this. Um, you can just set whichever one is, if P is small, set NP equals 10 and solve it, all right? If P is large, do N times one minus P equals 10 and uh, solve it. And then you find the largest N or you could solve them both. You'll have two N's and just use the largest N. So you wanna make sure that both those conditions are met and that your N is big enough. So here I said N equals 0.261. I mean, n times 0.261 is 10, and n is basically 38.3, so I use 39, all right? And then what is the largest sample size you can take and still meet the 10% condition? So 10% condition means that 10 of your samples should not exceed your population size. So I'm going 10n equals the population size. And since I know it's 600, I substitute and I basically get my largest possible sample size is 60. So any samples from 39 to 60 are fine. How should you take the sample in order to meet the random condition? Uh, take a random sample, all right? Uh, and then on the right side, we have the patient health questionnaire again, and this is depressive disorder. And this one is a uh, 0.214, so I could go ahead and change that to 0.214. Come on. So again, you always want to use the decimal, not the percent version, if you can help it. And your population in this chance is, in this instance, is 700 classmates, so N is 700. So the smallest sample size to meet the large counts condition, that's where N times P and N times 1 minus P are 10. Uh, since P is small, I just have to do N times P. So 0.214 times N is 10, divide both sides by 2.214. I get 46.7. Always round up. You notice uh, here I had 38.3, but I used 39. So you always round up here. And largest sample size, as long as I don't exceed 10% of 700, we're good. So that's 70, and we take a random sample. All right. Assume you take a sample size of 50. So here, now we know that n equals 50, the little n, not the population. And here, n is 55. All right. What is the expected mean for the sampling distribution? The mean stays the same, so use the same proportion. All right, it doesn't change. Don't use a decimal, use a proportion. What is the standard deviation for the sampling distribution? So this is the formula here in yellow. It's also in your notes. It's p square root of p times 1 minus p over n. Uh, p is 0.261. So 1 minus 0.261 over 50. And you get 0.0621, which is kind of funny because it looks like the number is just rearranged. What are the odds? All right. Uh, on number five, we have 0.214 is our proportion, and our sample size is 55, so we have a 55 on bottom instead of a 50, and here we get a slightly different standard deviation of 0.0553. Okay, on the left, what is the probability that less than 15% in your sample experience these symptoms? So we have our mean, it's a 0.261, oops, typo, 0.261. All right, and I have my standard deviation. So if I put these in the staplets, 0 0.261, 0 0.261, and what was the standard deviation again? 0 0.0621, so confusing when it's just numbers, when it's the same digits but rearranged. All right, and I want to know the probability less than 15% change to a decimal to the left of a value, 0.15. Calculate. 
show labels, and then you basically make sure I set that up. Oh, hold on. Uh, oh, I had the, no, that's the right number, 0.0369. I was just looking at the wrong problem. So there we go, 0.0369. So it's 0.261 and 0.0621. Once you get the normal distribution model on your staplet, it's pretty easy. Now they want more than 35%, so I go to the right of the value and I go 0.35. Calculate my area, I get 0.0759, boom. And then I do between both those values, between two values, and we said it was 0.15 and 0.35. Calculate your area, and there it is, 0 0.8872, 0 0.8872. Now I'm going to go to this side. Now we have our standard deviation. We have our mean, so we have that model. So i got to do 0 0.214 and 0 0.8872. 0.0553, 0 0.0553, and plot my distribution. And the first question asks me, um, what is the probability the proportion of my samples less than 0.15? So pretty much the same numbers that we were dealing with in the previous problem. So we have 0.15 less than 0.1236, which is what I have here. Uh, more than 0.35, go to the right, 0 0.007, which is what we have here, and then between the two values, 0.15 to 0.35, and I get 0.8695. All right, so just again, a quick wrap up. Uh, we have the 10% condition you should know, the random condition you should know, and the large counts for proportions. Remember, this does not apply to means. Okay. And then once you, uh, if you're doing for samples, probabilities for a sample, uh, then you need to use the adjusted standard deviation, which is in this yellow formula here. So your standard deviation is going to tighten up. Okay. On the next page, we're looking at distributions for means. The U.S. Census looked at families where the head of household is 35 to 39 years old. The mean income is $117,705 with a standard deviation of $1,982. We decide to estimate the income taking a random sample of 64 similar households in Round Rock. What is the expected mean of your sampling distribution? It should stay the same. What is the expected standard deviation? So the formula here is a little bit easier than for proportions. You just take your old standard deviation and you divide by the square root of your sample size. So instead of a standard deviation of $1,982, I'm using $247.75. So I have my mean and my standard deviation, and then I can do my models here. So let me go ahead and do on the right side here. Now we have households 50 to 54 years old, and you can see the income is higher. And this time we're doing a random sample of 100 households. Mean stays the same like before. And then I just have to divide that 2891 by the square root of the sample size, and I get $289.10. So now we have both our distributions. So I'll work through these three problems. Uh, 117,705 and 247. 117,705 and then 247,75. Plot my distribution. And the first question was more than, less than 117,500. To the left of 117,500. Calculate the area, 0.204. So hopefully that's, uh, that rounds to the same value. It says 0.204 there. More than 118,000, so that's to the right of 118,000. And we're getting 0.1169, which matches our answer here. And then finally, between those two values, so we have 117,500 and 118,000. Pretty sure I did that, right? And I'm going getting 0.6791, which is the correct answer right there. Okay, so now I'm going to do the... Um, Model on the right, which has a mean of 148084 and a standard deviation of 28910. 48084, 28910. 
plot my distribution. First question asks, what is the probability it's less than 148, 300? So to the left of 148, 300, calculate area, and I get 0.7725. And there it is, 0.7725. Then I have one, more than 147,500. So to the right of the value, 147,500. And I get 0.9783 right there. And between 147,500 and 148,300. 147,500 and 148,300, I think. I'll have to double check that real quick. Yep, okay. And calculate. And I'm getting 0 0.7508, which is the correct answer there. So again, the main thing on these is you're basically doing the normal models like you did in the last unit, but we're having to adjust our standard deviation for both means and for proportions when we calculate probabilities for samples.